So who am I? Uh, my name is Boaz and I'm uh, f born in Geneva in Switzerland and uh, living quite close to where I was born now. Um, I am uh, uh, an in intractable introvert, meaning that um, I, I really spend a lot of time internally. I spend a lot of time in meditation. I spend a lot of time um, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going or what I'm looking for, um, but there's something that feels really a powerful move to um, to enrich and to brighten um, the different things that come through me. Um, and so where I live is quite important in terms of the, the closeness to nature. Um, mm -hmm. So right now I'm, I'm very close to the Jura in... Um, in Switzerland, and uh, we have a view on, on the mountains there, and uh, that feels like a really important part of how, how I can support myself to then engage in a way that feels helpful, skillful, and wise. Um, so it took me a long time to figure that out, that I, it's really important to know where I am and how I can, um, how I can support myself, what my needs are. To be able to then act mm -hmm. and um, in terms of uh, what i do then in the world um, i'm trained as a, a psychologist a clinician and i work i work with individuals mostly with groups and actually more and more with communities mm -hmm. and the idea is to help develop engineer and design psychosocial approaches to build resilience build emotion regulation build social mechanisms of regulation also um, so, you know, we think a lot about how to improve one's mental health and reduce anxiety and depression and such. And obviously all that is very important. Um, and yet there's a huge sort of shadow or, or um, sort of hidden um, part in, in, in terms of how we can support ourselves in, in mental health today um, in the sense that we're not including relational approaches or very little. Um, I mean, as a clinician, you know, 95% of therapy occurs one to one. So I, I, I really bring a lot of emphasis on group, group work, community processes, and how the way in which we engage relationship has direct impact, a serious and, a, you know, durable and very deep impact on how we feel internally. Um, so I'm, I'm shifting more and more to group and, and community approaches and also social and political engagement, which is the next level in a way, the next sort of fractal or, or, or um, uh, dynamic that um, I'm looking to include in terms of how we can support wellness, how we can support wisdom, which are the two words I saw at life itself, you know, it's really, it really, it really hit me. Mm. Um, a wiser, weller world, I think mm. that's the, one of the mottos. And um, those two parts are also very connected to my, one of my um, tradi home traditions, which is Buddhism. Um, you know, the, like the two wings of the bird where you have compassion and wisdom and um, really bringing in more qualities of the heart and more qualities of, um, of the mind. Although it's kind of simplistic to divide it that way, but um, mm -hmm. it's one way to look at it. Yeah, so maybe that's just a, a little short introduction as to who I am and what I do. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so I'd love to know how you came across life itself. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a Dharma teacher and um, one of my colleagues, Jamie Bristow, um, made a personal invitation for me to come to, to the life itself. Um, a residency in May with Liam, Liam Kavanagh. And, um, and then I had another invitation from one of my Dharma friends um, for the same place in the same seminar. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I'm receiving from two different people the same invitation. Um, so I only decided to come about a few days before the actual residency um, for a variety of reasons. But it was very, it, 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 yeah, it, it was a very exciting um, discovery initially, and then actually an experience in terms of um, where, how it's influencing my um, my way of wanting to work and my way of even thinking about how we can change the world. Um, so there's quite a number of things in those two things. But just to say briefly, um, 
I've done a lot of meditation retreats. Um, I've done a few years of silence um, in hermitages and meditation centers. I was a Buddhist monk in Asia. And um, the notion of a residency, the notion of, a, of being in a place and co-living with other people um, felt very resonant immediately. Um, and then there's the part about workshops, the part about structured educational programs, about um, developing specific, specific qualities, like an intentionality that's you know, quite strong in that residency that felt really good. And, and I had had those two you know, in, in, in different contexts, but the, the one that I didn't have was all the, like the free time around um, the education and the free time and the, 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 the meditation practice. And so I was able to keep on working my daily schedule and engage with the community, you know? So we were like living together and working together partly. And then there's a whole other space. And I realized when I spent, you know, two weeks there, I was like, well, actually that kind of feels good to live like this. It feels good to live with other people um, who have, you know, a, a certain sense of in, uh, interest in, I don't know if we can call it transcendence or sacredness or some kind of a pull towards um, really living very meaningfully, very intentionally. Um, and that doesn't have to fit into the box of meditation or even Buddhism, but, you know, actually perhaps through the arts or through poetry or through singing or dancing or music or um, intellect, acad academia. Um, and so th that the collective of people that were there, the experiences that they'd had, the quality of everyone's personal development, you know, everybody had already done quite a bit of personal work, really felt like quite it felt similar to like a, a monastery in the sense that everybody was there to find a deeper sense of connection to themselves and the world. Um, and yet it felt very non-denominational and very undogmatic. It very, very open and very free in terms of, you know, some of the biases or some of the implicit obligations or dogmas that an institution will often have. Yeah. So that was very exciting. That was like a new way of thinking about spirituality, a new way of thinking about how we can do things together in kind of like a meta-modernistic frame, mm -hmm. to use that term just um, uh, briefly. To, for, for me, what, what that resonates is that in a way we're, we're, we're able to nourish and support um, a sense of a meaningful life and, and, um, and powerful engagement in the world in relationship to all of the different traditions and ways of looking that our heritage, our evolution has brought, uh, has, has all the evolution that has come to pass. So, you know, the, the very early um, belief systems and, and ways of thinking about and viewing the world um, in animism and then like the actual revolution and then the more modern paradigms and postmodern thinking and all of these are like, if you go, if I go to a, a monastic setting in Buddhism, you know, it's, it's going to have maybe like one of those strong, strongly anchored. But there it felt like there were many of them that we could juxtapose and interact with. And actually, I felt like I, I could have more parts of my of my psyche and my interests um, in, included in a space like that, because it was it felt so dynamic than I perhaps ever have felt. I mean, I'm not exactly sure if this is the truth, but it, it kind of had that feeling, it kind of a newness and a sense of sort of um, a widely encompassing con container for all the different dimensions of my of my being and, and my interests to be supported and then nourished. Mm -hmm. um, so that felt that felt very meaningful. Um, and then, you know, develop really good connections because you can spend quality time with people. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes in workshops, you know, it's like it's, it's, it's a lot of content. It's a lot of study and we don't really get to have informal time. But there we really did. Um, you know, could go for walks, could go for um, swim in the river, we could go for a, a, a tea in the, in the all very, very beautiful, astonishingly beautiful town center of Bergerac. Um, and all of those, you know, put together with the education and then, you know, the more um, practice oriented, the practice times of meditation and, and, and such felt like a, a really powerful mix. So I, I was, I've been thinking about it. I, I went again to Re Liam's residence in, um, in, uh, in August. And in fact, I got so ex enthusiastic that, uh, you know, we, we, we got talking and I'll be proposing a residency as well myself next year. Oh. 
yeah, for two weeks in, in, in the type of work that I do around group process and, and relational embodiment and um, communication and things like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very enthusiastic uh, into, into the project.